Australia, 2007. Paraglider Eva Vishniuska is in the wrong place at the wrong time. Everybody was thinking, okay, we are fast enough to fly away from this cloud. But no one anticipated the immensity of the storm. It was the biggest and strongest thunderstorm that I ever saw. We knew we are playing with fire now. It was like a giant hoover sucking them up. This is the extraordinary story of a paraglider who cheated death. Ten kilometers above the earth. August 2006, one of the world's leading paragliders, Eva Vishniuska, narrowly escapes death in a freak accident in the Swiss Alps. With a fractured pelvis, her dream of winning the upcoming world championships in Australia seems over. The beautiful thing in paragliding is you don't need anybody. You just take your backpack, go up, and you just glide totally free. Before I started flying, I didn't really know what to do in my life. When I started paragliding, uh, it was like a virus. I couldn't get rid of it. So. I changed everything, I decided to live in a car, just following the competitions, so everything in my life was around flying. In only her fourth year of competitive flying, Eva Vishniuska is already the top-ranked female paraglider in the world. Eva Vishniuska, who is the first one on this event? I was the German champion, then I won one World Cup, second one, third one, fifth one, and it's like collecting <laughs> the titles, and the only title I didn't own was the world champion. So of course it was a big dream to have this one. Just six months after fracturing her pelvis, Ava has fought her way back into contention for the world championship. Just a few short years, the outback town of Manila has become a mecca for paragliders the world over. 150 pilots from 34 countries will challenge for the world title, the highest accolade in paragliding. Before the world championships in Manila, I had a big accident in Switzerland. I had to work a lot on my physical strength to to get to the top again. You're listening to Breakfast, ABC New England Northwest. A big hello to paraglider pilots from around the world in town for the paragliding championships. The forecast looking clear, variable winds, but some storm clouds brewing this afternoon. In the week before the world championships, Ava and the German team are taking part in a cross-country event called the XC Open. I wanted to participate in the XC Open, to know about the area, where are the good places, where are the difficult parts, just to be prepared for the world. Okay. 
German team leader Stefan Mast is responsible for the safety of Eva and the other six German pilots. Eva was physically fit and she was also mentally top of the game. She was not going for the female title, she was going for best place in the competition. Another member of the German team is Andreas Malecki, who has been training with Eva for the past three years. Eva is a very important pilot, one of the best girls from the world, and um, she will beat the boys, not only the girls. Anyone wants to come to this briefing, you want to be here in the next 30 seconds, please? The director of the Manila Cross Country Championship is Godfrey Wenis, one of the most experienced pilots in the world. Wenis is the former world record holder for long distance paragliding. The person that uh, wins an XC Open World Series event, which is an endurance event as opposed to a drag race, is the person that flies the furthest by the end of the day. So it needs not just speed, but endurance. And it's not just a physical endurance, it's also a mental endurance. In a cross-country event, pilots are permitted to fly in any direction they choose. The early start of the clouds is to the north of us here, and you can see to the north of us is where they are the biggest now. So quite obvious. By the time the pilots assemble on Mount Bora for their weather briefing, the threat of severe thunderstorms to the north has increased dramatically. And that I made quite clear for them, that there was a line there, if you get there early, you'll be able to pass through and continue on on a long flight, but if you get there late, you might be stuck at a dead end, effectively. At 11.30, the pilots begin launching from Mount Bora. Basically half an hour after the briefing, probably about half the pilots are flying, around 50 to 60 in the air at that stage, most headed north. Paragliders use rising columns of hot air known as thermals to gain altitude. When cross-country flying, they make distance by climbing in these thermals and using the prevailing winds to glide down from one to another. Clouds in our game are of course lift and the quicker it is the faster you go on your average speeds. So the guys are looking for the bigger clouds in order to maximise their cross country speeds. To win that day they would have definitely had to fly with full tailwind and fly towards the emerging clouds and get past it before it turns into a line of thunderstorms or indeed some larger cells. After launching, the paragliders form into groups known as gaggles. Due to a southerly wind, most pilots in the first gaggle elect to fly north. With the clock already ticking, they need to quickly navigate past the areas of atmospheric instability that lie ahead. Sixty minutes into the launch window, the German team prepares to take off. We didn't want to take off very early. We decided to let some people fly, so the air is marked. The thermals are already marked by the other pilots, so you can fly faster just following them. Ava makes her pre-flight checks and sets her GPS track log to record. As we realized we have a southerly wind, we knew we have to fly north between those clouds. But they were that far that at the moment at the takeoff it was not really looking like a big danger. You could see the clouds forming and popping up all over the places that there was more activity to the north, but it, there was no real thunderstorm or pre-thunderstorm seen at that time. But Ava's friend, Austrian paraglider Gerald Amaseda, is already concerned about the possibility of a thunderstorm. When I first arrived at Mount Bora, and I saw these clouds, I was sure inside that the day will be not good. I was sure about uh, the humidity, I was sure about the possibility of thunderstorms inside of me, I was sure. But this is the problem with competitions. 
I felt a little pressure because I was in a competition and I, yeah, you go, you go flying. Freak storms are one of the biggest risks to paragliders at the top of their game. It's the one element they can't control. Once in the air, they're in constant radio contact with their ground crews, who monitor the weather and follow the pilots cross-country to retrieve them from their landing points. The first time I radio Stefan was when I was at the cloud base. The first part of the flight was actually easy. I followed the ridge north and I think about 20 k's, then the ridge stops and the flatlands begins. 